Hello viewers and learners of the MEVE001 Environmental Impact Assessment for Environmental Health module. We will discuss on the Environmental Impact Assessment of Mining Projects. After reading and listening to this module, you will be able to explain the potential impacts of a mining project. So let us now see the definition of mining and how a mining project can impact the environment and bring about uh, serious consequences in the environmental health of a uh, person uh, that, can, that can also lead to socio-economic impacts and that can also lead to the degradation of the uh, air, water and also the soil environment. Let us now see these topics in detail. Now when we define mining, this uh, includes the extraction or the removal of minerals and the metals from the earth. Uh, we all are fond of wearing gold, diamond or using silver, you know, in the uh, silver lamps and certain other uh, things. Uh, we consider this also as a religious thing and we use it in many of our customs and our culture. So where are all these minerals got from? So they are basically got from the earth's earth, uh, from the earth and uh, they are actually valuable, they are expensive and in many of the places mining is being carried out. For example, in South Africa, uh, here you get a lot of gold and uh, the, in the same way for diamonds also. Uh, so there are even some other metals also like you have the copper, you have tin, you have nickel, then you have bauxite, uh, you have a lot of uh, the laterite ores which are uh, also uh, containing the aluminium and the iron ore. Um, you can find them in the regions in the state of Kerala, then also in the Konkan Goa coastal belts. You know, so here you, so all these ores are being uh, used for the mining purposes and they are extracted in order to get the minerals. All these metals, they are used in various applications. For example, copper is used for the copper wiring uh, in the houses, in the industries. Tin is again another source, you know, that is also used in various uh, um, uh, things uh, to be made. In the same way, nickel is also used in certain uh, jewellery and that also causes little rash and irritation to some people. Then nickel and cadmium, it is also used in batteries, the same way lithium. Uh, in the same way, uh, iron is also used in uh, uh, making of certain utensils, then uh, copper, you know, you have the copper vessels. So all these things are of uh, basic uh, uh, value, you know, and uh, human beings use them in their various even daily, uh, daily needs and the daily applications of their life. So minerals and metals are very valuable commodities as we have seen some examples. So copper and tin, they are also used to make the pipe then in cookware, in utensils, in decorative items. They are uh, quite expensive these days. And the same way gold, silver and diamond, they are used to make the jewellery items. And uh, along with this certain gemstones are also used. For example, uh, the garnet, the opal and certain other uh, valuable gemstones. Uh, these are, uh, are also used. Even the coral are, is also used and uh, the, uh, the coral reefs also are getting degraded because of uh, getting them for the pearls from the oysters, you know. All these uh, involve with the environmental degradation because the mining activities are involved in the same. Now in mining, you know, there are large scale as well as the small scale mining operation. As the name indicates, large scale means they use, uh, th this is actually done by a company and they employ several people over here and they use huge bulldozers and excavators to extract the metal and the minerals from the soil. In order to amalgamate the extraction, certain chemicals are used. Uh, for example, they include the cyanide, then you have mercury, methyl mercury, they are all used and the excess of this and sometimes uh, unintentionally also, these chemicals can enter the rivers, then the nearby streams, the bays, oceans and cyanide and mercury especially, they are very toxic. Uh, mercury is a toxic heavy metal. So that can cause irreversible damage both to the environment as well as to the human health. So this pollution will contaminate the living organisms within the body of the uh, fishes, the body of the water and ultimately the people who depend on fish for their main source of protein and their economic livelihoods will be lost. So uh, that is uh, the uh, negative consequences of the uh, mining activities. So generally the mining will affect the environment adversely and it will also result in the deforestation because when you have to do the mining on a certain uh, area, Normally you map out an area that in this place maybe I will get you know this metal or uh, this thing and uh, 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 the people come with uh, the, active, uh, the activities, their infrastructure, the bulldozers and so on. So first is they try to cut off and clear all the vegetation in that area, the trees in that area. So what happens as a result? You, uh, it results in the deforestation. 
In the same way, small scale mining, these are actually carried out by a group of 5 or 6 people or 10 people and uh, they just want to uh, explore um, from one place to another, they keep moving and they try to explore uh, certain um, gem metals or certain costly metals. For example, they try to dig out if there is some gold in an area, then they do it personally um, in, in smaller groups. But here again, there are two types of dredging uh, practices that are being used. The land dredging. Here they use generators and they dig the large holes in the ground. And high pressure uh, hose and pipes are used so that the gold bearing layer of the sand and the clay is used. The uh, gold uh, bearing slurry is then that will be pumped into a separate uh, box or a container that will contain the gold particles and the mine tailings that will flow into an abandoned mining pit or an adjacent forest also. Now when this mining pit was filled with the water from the tailing then that becomes stagnant water pools and they will again be a breeding place for the mosquitoes, for the vector borne diseases and so on and if there is any vegetation where there are any tribal occupations or the uh, people and the communities are staying nearby then they can get affected by these um, diseases that are coming from that uh, tailings of the uh, mining and those mining pits which are filled with the um, mine waters. Uh, then another thing is the, uh, you, you, you can even, uh, you would have even seen this like for example there are rivers or the small streams that are going by and uh, in very simple I think these are uh, certain environmental and geological field uh, experiments that are being done. So you can actually uh, take certain uh, containers and certain sieves and you can take out you know along with the slurry and then you can try sieving it. So you can see that the, heavy, the heavier uh, particles and the uh, the less heavier particles, whether they get accumulated on that sieve or they go back into the water. So the, in the same way you can find out whether there are any you know precious metals, any pyrite or anything that can be seen from that sieve you can take it out. So these are simple experiments and you can uh, actually do it on their own to get uh, a better understanding of the um, uh, subject on the minerals and uh, rocks. Just like land dredging you also have the river dredging. So in the river dredging normally people move in the boats, they can also uh, stand on the platforms near the riverside and uh, they can also use, the miners will use hydraulic suction hose and they suction the gravel and the mud when they uh, move to the river. So from deep down they take that out. Then the gravel, the mud and the rocks they all go through the tailings and then the valuable minerals will be collected on the felt mats and the remaining will go back into the river that is the remaining sludge that will go back into the river but this will go into a different place from where it was originally collected. This will create problem for the river because uh, the displaced gravel and the mud that will disrupt the natural flow of the river because you know if there is uh, sediment, if there is mud that can actually block the flow of a river course. The same way if there are fishes, if there are certain living organisms then they can die and the rivers can get obstructed also for navigation if fishermen are going to use this as a source for their uh, transport. So the end result of all this as a result of the mining on the environment, stripping, dis uh, disruption, scarring of the large areas of the topsoil and all of the flora and the fauna, all this is lost to the mining activities. It involves a destruction of the agricultural land and polluted uh, drinking and the fishing waters. Uh, in case of the underground mines then land subsidence can also occur. Now when you are digging up actually, you are digging up chemically reactive minerals and that uh, may be harmless when it is underground. But when it is extracted then that can react with the oxygen, with the water and various other uh, particles, chemical particles and then that can uh, pose a serious hazard. In the same way extraction of sulphide ore that will produce sulfuric acid and also metal ions. That is also known as the acid mine drainage. Okay, in many places you would have uh, seen this problem of the acid mine drainage. And uh, here the entire habitat can be lost uh, to this problem, to uh, destruction will occur and the, human, the people who are residing also will have problems due to this uh, environmental pollution. It also results in the adding of potentially toxic chemicals such as cyanide to the ore to extract the metal. So in the earlier uh, part we have described that the uh, cyanide then other chemicals like mercury, methyl mercury all this can be added in order to take out the mineral from the ore. So all this will actually increase the toxicity level of the waste. Of course there are certain biological methods, there are the eco-friendly methods in order to extract the ores. For example certain bacterial species can be used for in the pyrite uh, mining. 
uh, in the same way for the sulfide ores also for the gold you can use certain species of the sulfidic bacteria the uh, uh, a certain other um, important uh, the environmentally or eco-friendly important bacterial and microbially important species they can be used for the extraction of the minerals uh, using these strains but only that the bacterial processes take longer the chemical process will be quick and you can immediately take out the mineral but in the case of the uh, bacterial process it will take longer and then disposal of that again you know autoclaving or sterilizing and then disposing that is also another issue which has to be taken into account now those who are exposed to this toxic waste from the tailing they will get sick then they can get the skin rashes because uh, their hands may be involved you know in taking out that material and uh, inhaling these chemicals that can also give rise to headaches and vomiting diarrhea and so on if the water is contaminated because when they are doing the mining activities normally they will be um, residents in that area for some period of time so they will have to do their normal activities also like bathing and uh, cooking or washing their clothes they will have to do the, all those in the nearby streams which may also get affected during this uh, mining activity so all this can get contaminated and uh, the explosives are also used by certain big mining companies they use them for blasting if you have ever gone to the regions like in Meghalaya where there is a lot of limestone the day they use this uh, blast at 12 o'clock in the afternoon at 1 o'clock and then they inform the people nearby that a blast activity is going to go on and uh, so that the people don't get near that place because there are a lot of caves and uh, certain uh, tribal uh, uh, communities and people they, uh, they use it for uh, their uh, uh, cultural values their ethos and uh, uh, people also like to visit them you know for the touristic purpose so thereby the people the nearby people have to be informed that blasting activities are going to take place because that will result in cracking and collapsing of the houses and injury to the people who are living around let us now give an example of the eia analysis of a coal mining project and that was by the jaswals nico limited this was a rapid environmental impact assessment report and this was evaluated by the Center for Science and Environment in New Delhi. So I have taken this report from there and just for uh, explanation purpose and for the classroom teaching purposes. So here uh, this company uh, limited they proposed a coal mining project in the area of Raigad in Chhattisgarh. And then when the, um, the CSE when they conducted the detailed EIA study. Uh, this they said that it was a Nagpur based uh, um, a study and the area around the proposed site was rich in the coal reserves. The project required 491 hectares of the land and the area around the site was densely forested. And uh, it also showed that agriculture is a major occupation in that study area. The project can impact the local biodiversity, the forest ecology, the livelihoods of the local communities. The villages around the area will also be affected with noise and air pollution and blasting and the ground vibrations. Then there are also environmental impacts of the project. When you are evaluating the impact assessment of a coal mining project, all the aspects have to be taken into account. So according to this report, they uh, proposed and they suggested that the open cast coal mining will result in breaching of the groundwater table. And then the rate of dewatering from the mine pit should not exceed 65% of the rate of the groundwater recharge in the mine lease area so that they can maintain the safe groundwater category. All the rivers in the region will be polluted and they are stressed due to the existing industrial activities which are going on. The mine pit water has a higher total dissolved solids value. Then there are some impacts on the local air quality also which can happen. So mining can cause significant air pollution. And uh, the proposed project, you know, they have made estimations that the fugitive emissions may be more. And the emission potential from topsoil removal, from drilling, from blasting, from transportation, material handling and also from the coal handling plant, they have all been estimated to be above 3500 tons of dust per year. So that can cause the occupational uh, pneumoconiosis or even among the residents who are staying there, they can get certain respiratory disorders. So adequate steps for the dust suppression like water spraying, bag filters, all this has to be attached to the drilling machine. Then the storages have to be covered and the covered conveyor belt also will be suggested so that from that also the dust will not be emanated. Local biodiversity. So as per they have uh, suggested earlier that the, uh, the entire area is surrounded by a densely forested region and uh, this is rich in the biodiversity. It can impact the local biodiversity of the area. 
So the EIA shows that important wildlife in that includes the bear, the, um, the monkeys, the peafowl, the leopards and so on. Noise impacts. The impact of noise and vibration that will be generated due to mining will be very high. Even in the blast activities, if you see the, the amount of sound that is coming, it will be very high. And that can impact the uh, ear, the eardrum and the local community who are living in the nearby villages. Disaster management also has to be taken into account. So they suggest that the coal mining and that to underground coal mining that can cause accidents and occupational hazards. The hazard can include the roof collapse and flooding, suffocation due to methane or carbon dioxide emissions and carbon monoxide emissions and so on. So disaster management plans, risk management to the underground mining uh, staff and officials, all this also have to be taken into account. Therefore, the proposed project is a large scale project, it is not a small scale mining activity and the EIA analysis estimates that the impacts include the impact due to coal mining and the impact include those on the local water regime, pollution to the air, noise and vibration pollution, impacts on the forest and the local biodiversity. The entire area is eco-sensitive and the forests are the lifeline of the people who are inhabiting this area. Finally, the, all this has to be taken into account before proceeding with the project. They propose that the mining methods, the mineral processing method, transport power and the water supply routes, the source of the water, mine infrastructure sites, mine residue disposal sites, domestic and industrial waste disposal site, housing sites, land use options after rehabilitation and alternatives to the river diversions. They have to be taken into account. Then the description of the pre-mining environment. So before that also a baseline studies have to be conducted and the regional geology of the project area needs to be studied well. For example, you need to know the geological structures, the formation, the mineralogical evaluation of those structures. Then you need to identify the position of the ore body. Then the tenement boundaries, the alternatives for location of the mining infrastructure. Appropriate representative borehole logs, a section through the ore body and the surface mapping. This has to be provided. Then identify and characterize the overburden material that will be disturbed because once they are disturbed then that may affect the water quality. Then the presence of dikes, the sills, the falls, all that that are extending beyond the property boundary. For this also the plans are required. Then the surface material and the bedrock characteristics of the developmental area. This also will be required. Further, you need to know the climate of that region. So the weather and the climate, the mean monthly and annual rainfall, the mean wind direction and speed, incidence of extreme weather conditions if they have occurred in the past and um, if they are occurring presently, all these need to be noted down and they need to be uh, uh, observed. Then the topography. So here the topographic maps of the development area at an appropriate scale with the surface contours at an appropriate interval should be described and uh, they should describe the topographic patterns and landforms with regard to the elevation, the relief and also the other aspects. The soil type and whether the soil will be disturbed, also the soil profile, their fertility aspects, the erodibility, the depth, all this should be provided and they should be mapped according to a standard soil classification system. The dry land production potential and irrigation potential of the soils, that also should be described. Then a cross section of the mineralized area showing the soil profile from the surface to the mineralized zone, that also needs to be done. Pre-mining land capability. This will actually provide the inventories and evaluations of the land capabilities in the proposed area and uh, for example you can classify them also into the categories like for agriculture, the forestry, the wildlife, then if there is fisheries, recreation, archaeological and cultural sites etc. Then for all the land capabilities we have to describe and document the area and location of the capacity classes to be disturbed by the project. This needs to be written down. Then you need to describe the ecology that is the natural vegetation and the plant life within 2 km radius of the proposed area. Describe all the vegetation that is present over there, the dominant species, endangered or rare species which are endemic to that area. There are intruders or exotic species in that region. Then we need to illustrate and locate the document of the area, various vegetation types, the forest types also that can be disturbed by the project. Now that was about the plant and the tree uh, morphology. Then we need to know about the animal life and these aspects. So we need to uh, provide an inventory of the wildlife resources in that area including species composition, distribution and abundance. 
Here again in wildlife you may have rare or endangered species and then they may have certain special migration route and staging areas. So if the mine route also we need to follow that whether in that route these uh, wild animals can come. Then the habitat evaluation, the distribution, utilization and critical habitats they need to be written down. The regional and local significance of population and the sensitivity to disturbance whether these populations will be disturbed are they um, eco sensitive to these mining activities. Then uh, the old and the current mining in the area okay whether anything has occurred in the uh, past and uh, the current mining in the area the proposal needs to be evaluated. The surface water has to be indicated whether there are any surface and groundwater routes the water courses the rivers the streams the dams then uh, the water rights in the affected area and uh, the position of the maximum flood line uh, for example in the 50 year uh, flood event you know so you need to know the whether any uh, natural calamities also have occurred in the past and whether it is a flood prone area also in the same way for the groundwater you should bring out the depth of the water table the ground waters presence of the water boreholes the springs uh, the bore water and estimated yield how much is coming out the productivity then the groundwater quality then identify where the groundwater and the spring water users are there in the study area and the quantity of this groundwater that they are using because in the event of mining if this groundwater is contaminated then how many users will be affected and what is the quantity of the water that they are using and for what purposes are they using the same. So the groundwater zone which is likely to be affected by the mining operation uh, the affected zone should be identified that can be mapped. Then the nature and the location of the significant aquifers, the aquacultures and relevant physical properties these also should be provided. Then there may be certain archaeological and cultural aspects so within these forested regions within these uh, areas where the mining is to be carried out there may be certain uh, geo heritage sites. So you need to conduct baseline surveys to identify and describe the archaeological sites in that study area. There may be certain monuments and um, uh, sites that are held by the national museum, the monuments, the art gallery. So these things need to be provided in detail. Then you have to consult the literature and the affected parties also local knowledge, indigenous, indigenous knowledge can be obtained from the local people. So that uh, literature can also be obtained from there and you can document them. Sites of the recognized archaeological and cultural interest should be described and shown on a plan and people may be even visiting these uh, monuments and these archaeological sites. Regional and socio-economic structure should be considered depending on the nature of the project. So uh, in that region you need to know the population density, the growth of the population and the uh, location, then the major economic activities that are occurring in that region and the sources of employment whether people are dependent on agriculture or fisheries or aquaculture or other sources for their employment. Then housing and the demand and the availability, the number of houses in the region and then um, the demand for the same and also the availability. The social infrastructure that is the schools, number of schools, the hospitals, the sporting and recreational activities and facilities, the shops, the police and the civil administration also we need to know everything about the water and the power supply that is provided in that region. So these are the pre-mining uh, uh, pre, uh, activity study to be done or the baseline studies. Then during the construction phase, here the brief description of the activities that are going to be carried out that has to be done with a near clear cut plan. The water, the power usage during construction, the proposed earth moving, dredging and drilling operation, then transportation and storage of the construction material, schedule of the activity and resource requirements and disposal of that solid waste and the dredge material because once all the construction activity uh, you are taking out some uh, lots of uh, land or the uh, earth material and then where are you going to dispose all those mine tailings all the solid waste material. Then operational phase here also we should know the uh, depths of the usable soil which will be utilized during mining how deep you are going to do the mining. Then the mine surface layout structures that may be affected by the blasting vibration location extent and depth of the surface subsidence structures and the drainage path that may be affected by the surface subsidence. Mineral processing a brief description of the mineral processing method will be required. So the, you need to highlight the areas that can generate the air water and the noise pollution then the plant residue disposal so the disposal methods that is going to be um, done for each type of residue that is being produced. Then the transport, the raw material and the final product, how they are going to be transported in, how it is coming in and how the final product also will be transported. 
then the proposed river diversion because sometimes you know even in the road projects we have seen that they will say take diversions because when some activity is going on there may be even the river diversions also can occur so whether there are any proposals for this also that needs to be uh, written down so dear learners this was an account of the environmental impact assessment of the mining activities uh, and we have very well seen uh, what are the types of the mining activities that are being done it could be a large scale or a small scale mining activity and during the construction and the operation phases um, uh, what kind of activities which are uh, done by the uh, mining people and which can negatively impact the environment so a uh, detailed environmental impact assessment study is always done for the um, companies who are coming up with their projects because when a mining activity has to be done you need to uh, understand you know, whether there are uh, the people, the residents or any other economic and commercial activity that is going on in that region whether that will be affected and you also need to know the vegetation and the uh, entire uh, environmental description whether the environmental quality will be degraded, the area will be deforested and uh, the uh, kind of the chemicals or what they will be using you know for their operations and whether that will contaminate the water sources and the people will be affected by drinking those water sources or the vegetation or the animal can uh, animal organisms can get affected in the process so therefore detailed environmental impact studies are very important for the mining processes to be carried out i hope you have had a good understanding of the subject thank you for your patient listening